Well, good evening, Northgate family and all the friends of Northgate. Thank you for uh, joining in with us tonight as we continue in our study in the book of Acts. We're in uh, chapter 8 and we'll be uh, going from verse 26 through the end of the chapter. Uh, as you remember last week, we've been talking about Philip. And Philip was much like Stephen who was chosen to be one of the anointed people who would uh, take over the distribution of food to those who were um, uh, either uh, elderly or a lot of women and children and orphans and things like that. So there was a big need. But that did not keep them from continuing to share the good news of the gospel. So they weren't only uh, leaders in the food ministry. They also went out and began to teach and to preach about Jesus and the fact that Jesus who who is and what was and is the Messiah, uh, came to give his life uh, for the people. So they couldn't keep they couldn't keep themselves uh, by the food ministry. They had to they had to go out and uh, and teach and preach the good news. And so, uh, but last week when we talked about when we talked about Philip, we saw that when he was in Samaria. Uh, he boy, he was doing some great work for the Lord. There were people who were being healed. There were people who were uh, being delivered, set free from evil spirits. Uh, there were there were just mighty miracles and things like that were taking place. Well, it got a lot of attention. It also got the attention of a guy by the name of Simon. And Simon, as you remember, he was he was a sorcerer in that particular village that they were in. And he did a lot of magic. He impressed the people. And he was somewhat of a leader because um, he would do all this magic stuff. <clears throat> so he was a sorcerer. And he would do wicked things, actually. And, uh, and so anyway, when he saw, F when he saw Philip performing the, the miracles through the power of the Holy Spirit, oh, he, he liked that. But he saw Philip laying hands upon people and people being healed and people being set free. Uh, he, he wanted that same kind of power. And in the middle of all this, uh, <clears throat> both uh, John, John and uh, Luke, uh, yeah, John and Luke uh, came and they, they, were, uh, they were wanting to uh, see what was going on in Samaria. I should say John and Peter, I'm sorry, John and Peter came. And they wanted to check out what was going on in Samaria. And so Peter's the one who dealt with this guy, Simon, because when they saw Peter and John uh, uh, laying hands upon people and people were being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, Simon wanted that power also. This is even after Simon professed uh, to, to be a believer and was baptized. And so he wanted that power also. And Peter set him straight. He says, he says I'll... Simon says, I'll pay for this. Whatever, whatever it costs for me to have this power, uh, I'll pay for it. And Peter basically says, you don't get this through paying for it. This is a free gift from God. And basically, they began to even doubt whether or not Simon really knew the Lord or not. So Peter, uh, I, sh I should say, uh, Philip was a part of all that. And uh, now we see Philip here in, in, uh, in starting with verse 26, uh, uh, let me just say in verses tw in verse 25, uh, it says that uh, that Peter uh, went back uh, to Jerusalem and um, he stopped in many places uh, and villages along the way to preach the good news after they had dealt with Simon. So now we get back to Philip. Philip. Uh, the, uh, well, let's pick it up at verse 26, and we'll read through to, to 29. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs, uh, runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and he met a, treasure, uh, a treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Klandite and the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And he was now returning, seated in his carriage. He was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk alongside or beside the carriage. So <clears throat> many people believe that, that Philip 
some time later told this story to Luke, and that's why we have it in the gospel uh, in the book of Acts that uh, this this story was told to Luke when when Luke and Paul probably stayed at his house uh, later on. But anyway, God ordered Philip. It says here to go south, and and it was on a desolate road that went from Jerusalem to Gaza and then on to Africa. So he was an Ethiopian. Uh, he, he was from Africa, and that's where he was going back. Now, this man from Af Africa, he had a very, very important job. His job was that he worked for the queen. And uh, Luke wrote that this official, this, this, this Ethiopian, had gone to Jerusalem to worship God. So that's why, this, that's why this guy was in this carriage. He was a prominent man. He, he oversaw a lot of things. And uh, this official may have been born a Jew, but probably not. But uh, there are those who think he might have been born a Jew. Or he may have just decided to be a follower uh, of the Jewish religion. So many people did that, even if they weren't born Jews. Uh, they wanted to worship uh, the real true God and not false gods. They wanted to follow the law, the law of Moses. So they would read the scriptures. Now it says that you know he was reading the scriptures out loud. Well, that was kind of common back then. People would walk around reading scriptures out loud. We don't do that so much here, but uh, they 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 didn't care what other people thought of their reading, I guess. So as he was traveling home, uh, this official was reading the, the the scriptures. Tell us here, he was reading from the book of Isaiah. So he obviously had a scroll and he had some manuscripts of the writings of Isaiah. And uh, so as the carriage was moving, God speaks to Philip and he says uh, to either walk alongside or run alongside the, this carriage and ask this question. This this is what. This is the question that Philip asked this Ethiopian uh, uh, official. He says, do you understand what you are reading? <coughs> you know, as Christians, um, we must always listen to the Holy Spirit when he speaks to us. You know, so many times people's lives are in the balance. And if we hear the Holy Spirit say to us, go to that person or ask this question of that person there. It just might be that, that God, wants to, God wants to do something in their life. Uh, maybe they need to hear about Jesus and the goodness of God the Father. So the Holy Spirit will not only tell us where to go, but he'll also tell us what to do. He'll also tell us what to say. Sometimes I think we get a little fearful of, you know, kind of cold turkey going to somebody and say, do you understand what you're reading? Or do you understand why you're thinking that way? Maybe the Holy Spirit's just speaking to us and telling us to go to that person. So we've always got to be ready uh, to respond to the Holy Spirit's leading, don't we? Kind of reminds me of a time many years ago in my early days of youth ministry, I was reading the newspaper one, one Monday morning, I'll never forget it, and I saw a very small article in there about a young girl that was uh, um, in a motorcycle accident with her boyfriend. And as I read this just real, very short article, it was probably a couple of paragraphs long, it wasn't very long at all, all of a sudden God started speaking to my heart. And this article said that this young girl was in the hospital, in the Queen of the Valley Hospital, and I knew exactly where that was, and uh, she was not expected to live. And I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, you need to go to that hospital and you need to pray for that girl. I didn't know this girl. I've never done anything like this before. But I, I, in my time of prayer, I heard God say, go there. And so there's a lot that transpired in this story. But to, to, to give you the Reader's Digest version of it, I finally got in the hospital. I got to where... Uh, she was in ICU. I met her mother, who was desperately waiting for something to happen. They were, she was expecting uh, either the doctor to come out and say, you know, she's got too, many, too much brain trauma. She's not going to make it. The doctor did not expect her to live. By the time I got in, into her room with, with her mom, um, 
the, the girl was unconscious and the doctor didn't expect her to live. So we just prayed. We just, I grabbed hold of mom's hands and we laid hands upon, uh, upon this girl and we prayed for her. And, uh, um, you know, to, to, to my amazement, you know, me, a man of faith and power, you know, but I was still amazed uh, that in two weeks, this girl came in the church and I was leading worship. This girl came in the church and she was in a wheelchair and God saved her life that night. Well, that particular morning, both mama and, and the girl that was not expected to live gave their hearts to Jesus and many people in the family did after that. So I'm just saying that it's, it's so important that we hear the word of the Lord and speak to our hearts. I was, reading, I was reading an article in the newspaper and it touched my heart and God says, you need to go. Now that doesn't happen to me all the time, but from time to time, I do have uh, uh, situations like that where God leads me or unbeknownst to me why he's leading me here or leading me there. But we can all, we can all say the same thing and God gives us uh, not only the not only where to go and what to say and what to do, but God God sends His Spirit along with us, and it's the Holy Spirit who does the work, and we are just vessels. We are just vessels to be used by God. Uh, secondly, I don't know if I gave you number one, but the first one the first one was Philip meets an important man from Ethiopia. Okay. Secondly, Philip tells. The good news of the gospel in uh, in verses thirty through thirty five. Let's go there. Verses thirty through thirty five. Philip ran over and heard the man uh, reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, "Do you understand what you're reading?" The man replied, "Oh, how can I unless someone instructs me?" And he urged Philip to come up uh, to into the carriage and to sit with him. The passage of scripture that he had been reading was this, and this, this is right out of the, the book of Isaiah. He was, the, he was led like sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shears. He did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet speaking about himself or someone else? So, so beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. So this is, a, this is just a tremendous story. Uh, after, after Philip asked the question, do you, do you know what you are reading? Do you understand what you're reading? And his response was, how can I unless... Someone instructs me. The official then invites F Philip into his carriage. And uh, usually when the Holy Spirit is leading us, people are ready to hear the truth. Uh, just, like, just like that young girl in the hospital, they were ready for something to happen. They were ready for the touch of God in their life. And, uh, and so the Holy Spirit leads us and people are ready to hear the truth. Their hearts have been prepared by God. So the passage of the official uh, that he was reading about the Messiah, it was an opportunity for Philip to talk about Jesus. Even, this, even though this official was an important man, he humbled himself by asking Philip for help. This passage is from the Old Testament, and as I said, it's found in Isaiah 53, verses 7 and 8. It's about the Messiah, uh, and it's about a servant who suffered, and that servant was the Messiah, that servant was Jesus. The, the, uh, the Ethiopian uh, official, he did not realize that it was about Jesus. And so Philip uses this passage so that he could begin to talk about the good news. Basically, it was an open door. Do you understand what you're reading? No, I don't, unless someone helps me. What is this? Who is this, who is this individual? Was it the prophet Isaiah who was suffering? Or was he talking about somebody else? And this gave Philip the opportunity to begin to share that it was about Jesus, the Messiah. See, G Jews who lived in the first century... They did not expect their Messiah 
to suffer. So that was that was what was difficult for any anyone of the Jewish faith. They expected their Messiah to defeat the Romans. That was the whole thing. They were looking for a Messiah, but they were looking for a Messiah who would be military minded, and so uh, uh, and 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 he would defeat the Romans. But Jesus described himself differently. He described himself as a servant who would suffer. That's why they had such a hard time uh, uh, responding to Jesus as the Messiah. They believed for so many years that the Messiah would come and be a military force against the Romans. So uh, in, in, in Mark uh, 10, 45, this is how Jesus, this is how Jesus uh, describes himself. He said, for the son of man, for this, yeah, for even the son of man um, uh, did not come to be served, but to serve others and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus described himself as a servant who would suffer and, and who would also ultimately give his life for the entire world. You know, when Jesus had risen from the, from death, uh, he met two disciples. This is right after he resurrected. He met two disciples who were going uh, to a town called Emmaus. And as they walked, Jesus begins to explain the Old Testament to them. He shows how these prophecies actually pointed towards him. Let's go to Luke uh, chapter 24, and we'll start with verse 25. So as Jesus is walking along, he meets these two guys, on the, on the way to Emmaus and they were on the road and they were telling, they, they were despondent. They even, they looked, they looked like uh, they were troubled. Well, they had just heard that Jesus died and uh, they did not recognize as they were walking with him, uh, they did not recognize that it was Jesus. Now I know Jesus was in his glorified body and everything else and yeah, he, he, he was different. But I also think, I've, I've often wondered if, if somehow, sometimes in our despondency of things, things we don't understand why they had to happen the way, the way they do, and now we're, we're sort of suffering with it within because uh, things, are, things don't look good. Uh, I, I often wonder if they just couldn't see Jesus for who he really was. But anyway... Uh, they talked about the things that happened to this Jesus of Nazareth. And uh, they, said, they said how uh, even there were some women who came and said that, that he rose again, but we don't really know and we're not sure. And then Jesus said to them in verse 25, he says, this is of chapter 24, Jesus said this to them, uh, you foolish people, you find it hard to believe that all the, that will, that all the prophets wrote in the scriptures, wasn't it really clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and, and the prophets explaining uh, from all the scriptures the things concerning about himself. So Jesus is now using the, the, the words of, of, the, of the prophets and the words of the Old Testament to explain why he had to come. He came to suffer and to die. And so, uh, so they walked along and he began to explain all this to them. So this is exactly what Philip is doing with this Ethiopian, Ethiopian official. He was, uh, uh, he was answering the questions of this official. The prophecies were about Jesus. This prophecy that you're reading, he said to them out of Isaiah, he says the, these prophecies or this particular prophecy was about Jesus and that he would have to suffer, but he was the Messiah. This was good news to the official. He was now convinced that Jesus was who Philip said he was. So number three, Philip baptizes this official. Let's go to verse 36 through 40. <clears throat> Let me get back to the book of Acts here. As they rode along, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, 
Here's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north in the town of Astos. He preached the good news there in every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. So the Holy Spirit had already prepared this uh, Ethiopian, Ethiopian official to hear the good news about Jesus. He, 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 why would he be riding along in his carriage reading about something he didn't understand and was just hoping, hoping probably hoping that somebody would come along and explain this to him. The Holy Spirit sent Philip, and he believed, and now he wanted Philip to baptize him immediately. Uh, how many know that we can't force somebody to believe in Jesus? That person has to be ready, and it's the Holy Spirit that prepares him or her. Uh, when you think about people that you don't know, or I should say, when you think about people that you know that need Jesus, okay, uh, what you need to do is just start praying for them. Don't start trying to scheme and figure out ways that you can either get them to church or get them to read the Bible. Or those, are, those aren't bad things. But you need to pray that the Holy Spirit gets, gets a hold of somebody's heart. Uh, the Spirit has to draw them to himself. And uh, the Holy Spirit needs to prepare their hearts so that when you come, you will be that breath of fresh air, that thing that they need, that, that the Holy Spirit is sending you, and you can give them uh, the answers that they're looking for for their life. But that person also has to hear the good news. And that's what was so important to Philip and the rest of the, the, the disciples at that time. They were, they were just intent on making sure that people understood the good news. Otherwise, if they don't hear the good news, they can't believe. It's hard for them to believe it. So we as Christians, we must always be ready to, open, to be open to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to help people understand what the Word of God is saying. And if you're not sure what the Word of God is saying, ask Him to reveal His Word to you as you read it every day. Ask him, say, Lord, show me what this means. Show me what this means. Um, in verse 36, the fact that the official said, look, here's some water. Why can't I be baptized? It shows that he really was a real believer. Now, in verse 37 in some of your Bibles, and, and uh, it, may, it may just say 37 and see footnote or something like that. Because verse 37 wasn't in the original manuscripts. Now, it's not that it's not in some of the other writings. And maybe someone came along later and explained what, what happened after that. But that he, he really did accept Jesus. He really did uh, become baptized in water there. And the Holy Spirit then sends Philip away. So it happened suddenly, Philip appeared again in the north, and he continued to preach there, the Bible says. Oh, let's go, let's read verses 39 and 40. So when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched, up, snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again but went on his way rejoicing. So he was rejoicing about something. He was rejoicing about something. He was rejoicing that he found out who the true Messiah was. He was open in his heart. He was open in his spirit to understand what he was reading. Who could this be about? The, you mean we have a Messiah? We really do have a Messiah, but he's not the Messiah that I thought he would be. He's the Messiah who suffered and died for the sins of the world. That would, when, when people understand that, uh, uh, it changes their life completely. It just changes them. Then all of a sudden, he saw some water and says, I want to be baptized. And so, so it, it, it says here that, uh, uh, that he went on rejoicing. 
And um, so, well, let me finish up here. Went, went on rejoicing. And meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north in the, in the town of Astos. He preached the good news there in every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. And so now Luke doesn't ever mention this official again. Uh, but a writer named Arrhenius in the second century, he wrote that this official went back to Ethiopia and preached the good news uh, there in Ethiopia. So you say, well, it's not in the Bible. We don't know anything about this guy. But there are other writings that tell us that substantiate what the Bible has told us. Even even though this wasn't mentioned by Luke, I mean, they're not going to be able to write everything and every step of the way for this guy. But someone someone realized that this guy, as he went back to Ethiopia, went back into Africa, he started preaching the good news of the gospel there. Because, you know, once once you receive Christ as your Savior and you really have an experience and a, 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 a uniting with it, with the Holy Spirit, you can't keep quiet. You can't keep quiet. I've known the Lord for many, many years, and, it's, and I still can't keep quiet about him. He still amazes me as we've been talking on Sunday mornings. And so he went back to Ethiopia, and he preached the good news there. Now, uh, the good news about Jesus then began to spread throughout the entire Gentile wor world. And uh, we're, we're going to talk more about this next week. We're going to and we're going to talk about uh, Saul's conversion. His name will be changed from Saul to Paul. And it's just a tremendous, tremendous story about the conversion of someone named Saul who was out to destroy the church. He was out to, he was out to jail Christians or, or even, even see Christians put to death by stoning. And so a tremendous, tremendous conversion. And we'll, we'll start talking about that next week. All right? Well, God bless you. Have a great night. And hope to see you all on Sunday. And, uh, you know, I want to pray for you. I, I, I think it's important that I pray uh, tonight that the Lord would help us hear his voice and do what he says. Father, I just pray right now for everyone who is listening to me today that uh, we don't make this a difficult thing. We just come before you and say, Lord, use me. Speak to my heart. Tell me what to do, where to go, and what to say. Lord, I know you want to put people in my path, just like you did with Philip here. You put this uh, uh, Ethiopian official in his path, in his path, and he heard him speaking about the word of God. And so, Lord, I, I pray that we too would constantly uh, be so in tune with you that we would hear your voice and we would do what you say. Help us, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a great night and we'll hope to see you Sunday. Bye-bye.